What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the TSB Sports Show. Along with Marco Milani and Jasper Lindsay, I'm your host, Daniel Archuleta. Let's hop right into football. We are officially halfway through this NFL season. It feels like it's flown by so far. But halfway through, let's just start off with saying, what's the one thing that has caught you guys by surprise so far? Start off with you, Jasper. Um, For me, it's mostly two teams. It's the Cowboys and the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, I expected the Baltimore Ravens to compete for a championship this year, and I have not seen Lamar reach that MVP level he reached last year. Now, given maybe teams learned how to scheme him a little better, who knows? But I'm not seeing him run the ball as effectively. Uh, he doesn't really have any weapons in the passing game. That offense is kind of looking stagnant. I mean, in the first half last week, I think their only score was the fumble, right? But, uh, yeah, they're not doing too well and then the Cowboys. This was supposed to be Dallas's year. They were supposed to run away with that division. Mike McCarthy needs to get fired immediately or as soon as possible. I think they're going to start with Mike Nolan because that defense is horrendous. But, yeah, losing Dak just really shows you how much that offense relied on him, and it's time for him to make that money. Yeah, absolutely. That was just terrible injury overall. But even then, just that entire division is just brutal to look at. And they have the talent or at least the names to go far in the East, but it just hasn't worked that way for them. How about you, Marco? What's caught your eye so far throughout the NFL season? I got to say the young QBs, Joe Burrow, Kyler Murray, um, guys like that that are just stepping in and just really, really doing – or leading the offense. Um, we were, you're just, just talking about Dak Prescott. Who comes in after him? Ben DiNucci. But I don't know who the heck is this guy. All of a sudden, he looks Gucci. Lo- what? Huh? Gucci Danucci. <laughs> um, but yeah, he steps in seventh round pick. Come on, and he steps in and he's and he's leading the offense. I mean, you don't have much to lead the offense with because thanks, Michael Gallup. Um, but anyway, there's just a lot of good young QBs and. Once Rodgers and once, like, the older guys retire, this, the future of the uh, NFL is going to be in some really, really good hands with those QBs. That's right. And, you know, there's something for everyone, too, like you said, with Kyler Murray and even have a nice pocket presence quarterback in Joe Burrow, who's doing a fine job with Cincinnati. You know, they're a couple years away from possibly making some noise in the AFC. For me, I'm, I'm going to stay in that division, the AFC North. I'm going to say the Steelers so far. No, I don't think anyone saw them going 8-0 to start the season. It was a tough game for them this past weekend in Dallas, but looking ahead for Pittsburgh, I, I don't really see them falling you know, at all. Maybe, maybe to Baltimore on Thanksgiving night, but looking at, if you really look ahead to their – to their schedule going ahead. They got Cincinnati this week. They at Jacksonville the week after. I mentioned the Baltimore game. That will be played at Heinz Field on Thanksgiving night. Then they have the Washington football team coming in. Tough game late is at Buffalo. Um, That's on December 13th. That'll be a Sunday night game. And then they finish with the Bengals again. And realistically, what, what more can be said about that defense? You know, just leading the entire league in sacks, just playing all around perfect. But one thing that might need to be said, though, is Big Ben's injury with to not just one knee, but to both of his knees. See what happens to him going forward, because we all know Mason Rudolph isn't the best, best backup quarterback in the league. But even then, that defense has been carrying him all the way through. And Roethlisberger, I believe, just landed on the COVID-19 list. Yeah, that too. That's right. So we'll see what happens. Big game this week um, for for them, see if they can continue their role. All right, let's uh, shift now to college football. We finally got the Pac-12 back last weekend, which was, you know, really great to see. That 9 a.m. kickoff out at the L.A. Coliseum was something to see. USC ended up winning that game at the end. Now, uh, Jasper, what did, what, what did you take away from this past weekend in college football? Any Pac-12 or – are we looking more SEC, ACC? I'll start with the Pac, but for the Pac-12, I mean, you had these two big matchups. You had Oregon versus Stanford, which turned out to be kind of a barn burner because Oregon's just that good. Uh, and then you had USC versus ASU. And 
ASU's offense looks electric. Once they get that figured out, I love Herm Edwards as a coach. That program, I think they may finish in the top 25 this year. Um, but, yeah, they're running reverses. They're running read option, and they look good. They can move the ball down the field. It's just a matter of whether their defense can hold up. Um, I do have to apologize for my take on the last episode, which was, I believe, three weeks ago when Michigan beat Minnesota – or Michigan beat Minnesota. Michigan's fraud. Michigan's a fraud. I, I – Called that one wrong. I'll admit it. Harbaugh's on the hot seat. Ugh, the last time Michigan lost to Indiana, Harbaugh was a rookie QB in the NFL. Ugh, that's embarrassing. Uh, but Indiana looks great. They're putting the big on notice. Uh, they dissect offenses on defense. They find your weaknesses and they attack it. Uh, man zone doesn't matter. Their offense can beat you. Uh, they also have probably one of the best names in college football in WAP Thylor. That was electric. Um, next, I'm going to talk about the largest outdoor cocktail party, Georgia versus Florida. This game was expected to be great. It was all right. Georgia is a fraud. My goodness. Kirby Smart. I'm getting kind of tired of Kirby. I can't lie. He hasn't done anything since he's gone there. Justin Fields decommitted. They had the number one recruiting class in 2018. They have six junior five stars. There is no reason this team should not be competing with Alabama in the SEC. It is ridiculous. Stetson Bennett needs to be benched. JT Daniels needs to be put in. And lastly, I'm going to finish up with Clemson versus Notre Dame. The game of the year. The Fighting Irish won the game. Ian Book was awesome. Besides the goal I'd fumble, I mean, that's, that was a minor slip up. That's not Ian Book. Ian Book can run with the best of them. Clemson's defense needs to be addressed. Their offense can't be stopped, but their defense is – they're good. They're good, not great. Uh, and lastly, I mean, whether you like it or not, I think the Notre Dame fan storm the field was awesome. It was awesome for college football. For COVID-19, horrible. But for college football, it gave us a sense of normalcy for once, and that game was awesome. Yeah, it was – I couldn't believe my eyes seeing seeing the fans storm the field. You know, Mike Tirico put it best, you know, in the midst of a pandemic, there's pandemonium in South Bend. Who I, – I, I don't know what to say about it. I mean, the university had to make, you know, all their students get tested now, see what happens in a couple of days with that. How about you, Marco? Um, any college football that caught your eyes this past weekend? Texas. The Longhorns, what a game. That was, that was probably one of the best games I've seen in a while. Um, I actually watched, watched the, almost that entire game. Um, the, another one that I really want to talk about was BYU. Come on, Zach. Um, there are some rumors that I was seeing on Twitter this morning that there was a 49er scout at, the, at one of the BYU games. So 49er fans, watch out for Zach Wilson. The dude can sling it. I don't know. What a player. I think he's going to be a top 10 pick. Um, there are a couple – I think I did see a couple mock drafts where he's in with the likes of um, the guy from uh, North Dakota State um, with Justin Fields in that same top 10 range or top 15 range. That's going to be – I don't know, but we'll see what happens come draft time. But – um. Yeah, I did watch a little. I did not watch the uh, Oregon Stanford game like I wanted to. Um, let's see what else. Uh, Oklahoma. I just saw this crushed Kansas. No surprise. Uh, of course, the Notre Dame Clems Clemson game. Um, and who is this Coastal Carolina team? I mean, this is like one of those. Who the heck are these guys? But they're undefeated. A small team being undefeated. Come on. Yeah, surprising stuff. Yeah, they're certainly looking to get that power. You know, the group of six bowl that you get from the yeah the group of five bowl. You know, from the uh, college football playoff committee. I will say this though about the BYU Boise State game. That, that Zach Wilson, I he is starting to turn at least my head. Seeing what he can do, I caught a little bit of the third quarter of that game, and he just has great pocket awareness. Where, whether or not he's rolling out to his right or left, he's hitting people in stride. 
I don't want to jump on the wagon this quick, but yeah. the more the more late we get into the season, and if he's going to continue his dominance, you never know. Maybe his stock will continue to go up. Unfortunate though for Boise State and Stanford, though if we have mentioned, you know, they were out there starting quarterbacks, you know, very late leading up to the game, and even then with Boise State, like they had their their backup in. And then he got knocked out like early in the first quarter, so they were down to their third string um, quarterback for the throughout the entire game against BYU. No, I think Zach Wilson he has potential. I need to see him in a bowl game. Once I see him win a bowl game, I'll hop on the Zach Wilson bandwagon. But I mean, if I think of who he's played, it just nothing jumps off the page to me. Boise State hasn't really been relevant. I think they were a fraudulent top twenty-five team to begin with. Uh, I mean, I do love the blue turf. Don't get me wrong. Always nice to see guys ball out on the blue turf, but I need to see a little more out of Zach Wilson before I believe. That's right. And small sleeper. How about San Jose State three and zero? Let's get them ranked, huh? Maybe, maybe I digress. Anyway, the Masters is this weekend. Very crazy to say that, given that we're in mid-November. But Augusta still looks great. I watched a little bit today on the uh, on ESPN Plus. You know. The grass looks great. The trees look beautiful. Only thing is we won't have any fans, but we still will have some great golf this weekend. Turn over to Marco now. Who is your prediction to possibly come out on top this weekend at Augusta? First of all, um, again, the big news going on at Augusta this morning, John Ram, or Rom, excuse me, skipping a, skipping a ball over the lake hole in one in, in a practice round. I saw the video on Instagram and I couldn't even believe it. But um, actually, um, he's one of my six six picks to win this to win this thing. So I made six picks and and I did it off of last year's master stats it with greens and regulation and fairways hit. So I am picking John Ram Rambo. I am picking Justin Thomas, Brooks Kepka, Tiger Woods, Colin Morikawa, his first Masters. And Xander Shoffley. Now, a lot of you are thinking, like, who the heck is this Colin Morikawa guy? Well, if you saw the PGA Championship at Harding Park, he absolutely tore up the course. He is – he was extremely accurate. And the dude can just play. And it is his first Masters. But I would not be surprised if he's in the top ten come Sunday or come Saturday. And with Tiger, this is – Augustus, of course, he knows like the back of his hand. Of course, he hasn't been necessarily great. He's been eh, iffy at best in the past couple couple weeks. I think he still uh, has a nagging injury, but and he's probably past his prime. But I don't know. Augusta's going to be oh, it's going to be a great Masters. Unfortunately, though, it's on ESPN, so I will not be able to hear. Jim Nance's amazing commentary, like we usually are. I will not hear let hear him say a tradition unlike any other. The Masters on CBS. Now the the first so, the first it's like any other the first and second rounds will be on ESPN. But once we get to Saturday and Sunday, um, they they're pushing back the Alabama LSU game on Saturday to about three o'clock, so they could fit in the Masters coverage. And then even on Sunday. They're only going to, they're for their NFL games, they're only going to have a one o'clock schedule out here on the West Coast. So there, there will be some, uh, some Jim Nance out there in Augusta. Um, more of an SVP guy, if you ask me, but even though he just hosts it, you know, for ESPN's coverage, uh, not, not that bad. We saw that from the PGA Championship. Not that bad. Yeah. Okay. But, so, so never mind. I will be able to hear J- Jim Nance's voice. So good for me. Augusta's gonna gonna be great. Hopefully, Tiger either either Tiger gets another green jacket or Colin Morikawa get gets his first or somebody or somebody else unexpected. Honestly, my sleeper, my se- if I were to pick a seventh, Bryson DeChambeau. There we go. I was waiting for Bryson's name to be mentioned. Woo! Hitting bombs on a man corner at two. Hitting bombs, <laughs> getting mad at ants. We love Bryson DeChambeau. He's electric. I think he I think he might have a chance to win this one. I mean, I love, my... your faith, I love your faith in Morikawa, but the PGA Championship at San Francisco, that's kind of a free-for-all. Anyone can take that one. But I think Bryson DeChambeau, 
He needs to get that green jacket so he can just be the most inflated ego on the golf course. I need that for Bryson. Yeah, He's okay. a huge stats guy. He because uh, um, he uh, like looks at all his stats. He looks at the numbers no, and no. he finds where he needs to improve. And through that, he's gained his driving distance not only in yards but accuracy. He's hitting these things almost down the middle of the fairway. I wouldn't be surprised if by the end of the Masters he leads in GRR or in fairways hit. That's gonna, it's going to be huge. And, and uh, his. Oh, no, it looks like we so lost. I think that the driver's going to get him far, but he has. I'm sorry? No, you kind of. Daniel? You kind of cut it. You kind of cut out there. Um, you can finish your point, though. He has to uh, really get the all around game because that's what Augusta is about. It's about the all around game. It's not just drive, driving things 300 yards. Yeah. I think he can, he can do it. But I just have this – I think more Kawa is going to come out better on top, in my, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, Bryson might also have a little roid rage going for him. Not to peddle any conspiracy theories here, but uh, performance-enhancing drugs are not illegal in the game of golf. I don't think so. Well, if DeChambeau does come out on top, he'll be the first player to win both the U.S. Open and the Masters since 2015 when Justin Spieth – or Jordan Spieth took – care of both in the same year uh, one more thing to look out for this this week um u.s men's national team finally back into uh, action this weekend or this week they play wales on thursday and then they close up the international break with panama next tuesday so just something to look out for i'll be i'll for sure be watching it um we'll wrap it up with that though thanks for tuning in to the tsv sports show make sure to follow the skyline view on twitter and instagram uh, next week, we will be back with a big NBA draft preview. So make sure to tune into that. And we'll see you guys next week on the TSV Sports Show.